Is your engine down on power or do you suspect that your head gasket is blown? This is the video for you because I'm gonna show you how to perform a compression test and a leak down test on an N54 engine. So let's get started. So before we get started with this, you need to remove some of the components that you always have to remove whenever you're gonna do anything on this vehicle. That would be the cowl that fits up here uh, with the cabin air filter and the engine cover right here. And then of course the um, cooling fan right here. Now that uh, I may or may not have been covered already in a video. I don't know if I've released it yet, but it's really easy. There's a T25 bolt right here. And then there's actually a T25 bolt that you have to get from underneath that's holding the automatic transmission cooler to the bottom of the fan. Real easy to see. And the thing just pops out. You also have to remove all of your coils and all of your spark plugs. You can check out my spark plug and coil video if you need to know how to do that. So now we are totally prepped and we can perform a compression test. So in order to perform a compression test, you need to have a compression tester. I have this deluxe compression tester kit from OTC. It is a 5605 if you're interested in that. I'll throw a link down in the description. There are a lot of different people make these. Very simple tool. We need this main hose out of it. And we're also gonna need the adapter that fits down in the hole. Now this is uh, an M14 comes on here, but on this particular engine, it actually has M12 spark plug threads. So we need to use this M12 to M14 adapter, kind of screw that in. Now I found on my, cause I was already doing this before I turned on the camera, just to see what my numbers kind of were. And I found that when I did the leak down to, first of all, I found that the compression test came in kind of low, really surprisingly low at about 150 PSI. And I was kind of stumped at that. So I moved on to my uh, leak down test. And when I did the leak down test, I found 10% leakage, but I could hear a lot of air coming out of, coming back out of the cylinder, not the adjacent cylinder. So what I did was I went ahead and I changed the O-ring on the M12 adapter to this thicker O-ring that I have. And I believe that, and, and that, you know, made me get 2% uh, compression loss in the leak down test. So that leads me to believe that my compression is a lot higher than uh, 150 and it all has to do with this O-ring right here, which I couldn't really hear while the engine was cranking. I couldn't hear that the O-ring might have been leaking. So I believe that it is. I've put on this thicker O-ring and we're gonna see what happens. Yeah, so all you do is uh, thread this adapter on hand tight. The O-ring's gonna kind of, it just needs to seal right there. You don't have to crank it on with a wrench or anything. And we're gonna thread it in. And basically you just kind of get it to where it's tight. Again, the O-ring just needs to seal. You hook this on, it's a quick connect connector. And I'm gonna put this gauge where you guys can see it. And then one thing you really need to do is you have to disable the fuel, the fuel pump fuse. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you gotta get into your glove compartment. You gotta pull the little uh, door down so you can get to the fuse box. And the fuel pump fuse is gonna be right there. That's where the fuel pump fuse goes, where the missing spot is. It's actually a 20 amp yellow fuse and you just gotta pull it out with some long needle nose. After you disable your fuel pump fuse, you wanna to try to start your engine. Your engine will run for a couple of seconds and then die, do it again and possibly do it again until the thing doesn't start back up because you don't wanna have any residual fuel in the system when you're doing a compression test. So now I'm gonna go in the car and I'm gonna crank the engine. I'm gonna crank it until this thing, until the gauge stops going up. A lot of people make the mistake of not cranking for long enough. You wanna crank it until the pressure stops building. Whatever that is, then you just wanna be consistent and do that across every cylinder. I just give it a good 10 count. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 100 and, where are we? So there we go, we're at 170 PSI. That's about what it should be on this engine. If it's 150, uh, you've got the beginnings of a problem, I would say there's definitely something wrong. And then 130, absolutely something's wrong. There, there's definitely, definitely something's wrong at 130 PSI or lower. So now we're just gonna repeat this on every cylinder, actually. This little button here is to release the, the air so that you don't uh, get a little shock when you do when that happens. So I'm just going to switch this over and hook this up and we'll do this for every cylinder. Cylinder two is looking even better. 180. Let's re release the pressure. Cylinder three. Hundred and eighty there as well. Cylinder four. Hundred and 
175. Cylinder 5. One, 175. Cylinder 6. About 170. So uh, based on these numbers that I just saw, there's no need to, to go any further. There's no need to perform a leak down test. There's nothing wrong with this engine. But uh, for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm also going to show you what it looked like when I first ran the test and I had this, uh, this smaller O-ring on here, the one that the kit came with. It wasn't sealing quite correctly. And I, I heard, you could he you're gonna hear where the air was coming out. Now, let me explain what a leak down test is. A leak down test is where you set the engine to top dead center. And that means that both the intake and the exhaust valves are closed and you're gonna introduce air into the system. You need to have an air compressor to do this. You introduce air into the cylinder and based on where you hear the air leaking out, that's where, that's where your problem is. So if the intake valve uh, had a chip in it or wasn't closing properly, maybe it was bent, you're gonna hear all the air rushing out of, the, out of this area right here, out of, the, out of the intake side. If it's an exhaust valve, damaged exhaust valve, you're gonna hear it over on this side. If it's a blown head gasket, uh, let's, you, you may hear the air coming out of the adjacent cylinder. You'll definitely hear the air rushing. If you put your finger in there, it'll change the tone of the sound because you're disrupting the airflow. So that's another place it could be. Another place it could be is uh, it could be going past the rings. You could have a broken ring and the air could be leaking down into the bottom of the engine and then coming out the top of the valve cover right here through the oil filler. Um, it could also be um, a blown head gasket and the air could be leaking into your cooling system, in which case you'd hear it coming out of the radiator cap, in this case, the coolant reservoir. So you wanna take both of those caps off when you do this kind of a test. Now, before we proceed, we actually have to set the cylinder to top dead center. My, meth my preferred method is to use a wooden dowel to do this, and I've got the wooden dowel sort of sharpened on the tip right here. There are many ways to do this. Uh, I suppose you could use um, a screwdriver, but if you do that, you don't wanna just stick the bare tip of the screwdriver down in there because it's gonna scratch the carbon on the piston and you could create a hot spot on the piston that way. So if you're gonna do that, maybe wrap it in some masking tape or something like that so that it doesn't scratch off the carbon. I just prefer to use a wooden dowel because it's not gonna scratch anything. And this is the reason why we had to remove the, the cooling fan right here because you need to actually get access and get a 22 millimeter socket onto the crank pulley bolt and we're going to turn it and you see how the dowel's going up now maybe we're on the uh the compression stroke or we could be on the exhaust stroke the only way to know see what you do is you turn it over until you see the dowel stop and then it's going to crest over and now it's going to fall down so when it falls down you can just go back the other way and now you see where the crest is so that's top dead center could be top dead center on the compression stroke or the exhaust stroke. The only way to know is to hook up the compression tester and see what happens. If you hear all of the sound coming out of the exhaust side, you're on the exhaust stroke and you need to rotate the engine 360 degrees and you'll be on the compression stroke. So now let's hook up our hose again with the wrong O-ring just until it's tight. Let's do this. Now you can hear, hopefully you can hear, there's a ton of air noise. You can see I got about 6% compression loss this time. And I can hear it all coming out here. And I can feel it with my finger right here. I can't feel anything here, but I feel it with my finger right here. So that's how I knew that something was wrong. So now I'm gonna change this O-ring to the thicker one and that'll solve the problem. Sometimes your equipment fails you, man. And you just have to adapt. So now we got that thicker O-ring on there. Let's do this again. Now you don't hear it at all. We got 2% loss, that's good. We're good there, healthy engine, nothing's wrong with the engine. I'm only gonna do this on this one cylinder because there's really no need to do it on all of them. So again, if you had a lot of loss, again, you'd hear it. You heard how, how loud it was the first time when there was some loss happening and how quiet it is when there's no loss happening or 2% loss. So if you hear it and it's kind of loud, you know there's a problem and just feel where the air is coming from. Sometimes you can look down here and you can see it bubbling uh, in the radiator. Here you're just going to hear it. You can just go like this. You'll hear the, the tone change. You might hear it from an adjacent cylinder. Put your finger in like that. The intake, you'll, just, you'll, you'll definitely be able to, just from standing away from it, you'll hear if it's coming out of here 
or if it's going into here, into the exhaust, you'll hear it, trust me, it's, it's pretty unmistakable. Now, if you have any kind of losses in your intake or your exhaust valves or your, your cylinder head gasket, you could go ahead and remove the cylinder head and take it to a machine shop, have them rebuild it. There's nothing particularly complicated about this cylinder head. It's just a normal cylinder head. It doesn't have valve tronic. It doesn't have uh, complicated springs that the cylinder, that the, the machine shop's gonna have to disassemble. They, they're gonna wanna charge extra money if you have like the M52, for example, that has the valve tronic thing that's gonna be more money. I've had a Valvetronic head rebuilt before on a Mini and it's more money. But this head is old fashioned. It's just, you know, you can take the, valve, the camshafts out yourselves. That's, that's a little bit less work for them and take it to the machine shop, rebuild it. Probably they would charge you, um, I don't know, depends on where you are in the area. Could be $600, could be $1,000. It just depends on, on where you are and your cost could go up from there based depending on what you choose to replace. I mean, once you're in there, you could find that this part's bad, that part's bad, oh, your turbos are bad, you wanna have them rebuilt, you can send those off to uh, somebody to have them rebuilt, or you can install brand new ones. It, you know, the, the costs with these things just kind of spiral out of control. Another option would be to just buy a used engine and have it swapped in. Uh, this is, in, it, as far as costs go, it, it's probably the same. A used engine is probably a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars, maybe. So maybe it, that might be a shipped price as well. Again, you just have to do some research and figure it out. But it depends on your skill. It depends on your your abilities. Do you have an engine hoist? Do you want to go buy an engine hoist? Are you capable of removing and installing an engine? Are you capable of removing and installing a head? If not, you got to find somebody who is. So uh, both options are doable. If you're going to have a shop do this. 99 times out of 100, they are going to want to install a used engine because it's just easier and quicker for them. They need to get their bay back. They don't want to have a car that's disassembled while a head is off in a machine shop getting rebuilt for a week. They don't want to have that, that dead space taken up. So if you enjoyed this content, give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And leave a comment down below. I do read all of them on all my latest videos. Remember to subscribe. I'm Jason, the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.